Okay, well, let's talk about our number one topic from our uh, survey that we put out to the community. What is highest on our mind in terms of genealogy research? And that is really the impact of artificial intelligence, AI, on genealogy research. Um, You know, this has been around for a while. We all know this is not necessarily new. It it started early on. We heard probably the term machine learning more than we heard AI. But um, genealogy websites have been using it for quite some time. Did did you get your cup? Do you remember that? Elevens' cup? I hope you're enjoying your favorite cup of tea as we chat today. Um, Gene... Ancestry.com, MyHeritage.com, all the big websites have been incorporating machine learning into their indexing, into their delivery of records, into how they're computing DNA results. Um, And so we've seen that for quite a while, but there has clearly been a huge uptick in artificial intelligence and, and really the role that it's playing across our life right? Not just certainly within genealogy. So while the world is kind of grappling with what does all this AI mean to them, we as genealogists are kind of wrestling with how to use it. Should we use it? What's the best practice for using it? Um, So we can start with, first of all, let's just all get up to speed because everybody's at a different place when it comes to all of this. What is AI? Um, You know, in some ways, I kind of feel like Rip Van Winkle, you know, waking up from a long sleep. When I was going through my, uh, my cancer journey this last year, it's like, I just kind of tuned out of a lot of stuff. So I've really been deep diving back into this to get up to speed with what's going on. And um, it's really interesting to hear not only how much it's evolved, but just in the last couple of months, how much it has evolved. So there's AI... AGI and ASI. And I thought it'd be interesting to look at real quickly how if you, if you ask AI what is AI, you get some interesting answers. So I went to chat GPT and I asked it, um, what is AI versus AGI versus ASI? So AI is artificial intelligence. And that's where we are now, right? So this includes the large language models, the the chatbots that we've been seeing, um, the interaction that we're getting on genealogy websites and other types of websites. It's really everywhere. Every time you go on a website and you have a question and you jump on chat, you're really chatting with a bot, it seems like these days. So that's AI. And then there's AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. And This says it implies a system with general cognitive abilities, not limited to a single task or domain. It's kind of that next step up from what we call AI. And it says AGI remains largely theoretical and is a major research goal in the field of AI. And I think that's the one that's really accelerating right now. And then there's something called ASI, which is artificial superintelligence. Have you heard this term? Get it on your radar because I think it's where everything is trying to go, it appears. Uh, It says AI, ASI describes a hypothetical future stage of AI where systems surpass the brightest and most capable human minds, virtually all domains of interest. This level of intelligence would not only replicate human cognitive abilities, but would also exceed human performance in creativity, problem solving, decision making, and other uh, activities. This is not in place yet, but you can see what they've got their eyes on uh, in terms of developing it. So where we are right now is AI and the beginnings of the AGI stuff. Um, As I said, um, I feel like I'm really just kind of coming up to speed with with all of you at the same time. Um, But interestingly, in taking on this new studio, Riverside, and the technology that it affords me here to do podcasting and videos, I thought I would share with you just my interaction with it from kind of the, um, the business side of what we do at Genealogy Gems and how 
I kind of ran headfirst into the impact that AI is having. So in fact, I'll on screen share here. And so I want to let you know, when you went to my website at genealogygems.com, you saw the landing page for this uh, video event. And we had kind of a description there where I just wrote up kind of what you would expect to find in this episode. So that's text. That's text that I wrote on the web page. So if I highlight that text and bring it into this new program called Riverside that I've been using for my live streaming, I want to show you what I discovered the other day that it could do. So I'm going to come over here. So remember, I've copied the descriptive text about this show on my computer. And I come over to Riverside and I click not record, but this new button that just popped up, AI voice. And here in the text box, I will paste the descriptive text about this episode. And you can see it's all typed there and just click the generate AI voice button. And it starts processing. And I'm thinking, hmm, well, this will be interesting. Maybe there'll be some, you know, British guy doing my, you know, reading my text or whatever. It took about, I'd say, 10 minutes for this to process. And I went over to my recording files. I won't drag you through 10 minutes of processing here. But when it was done, it says Lisa AI, and I can download a high quality wave or MP3 file of this recording. And let's In this first episode, I'll be diving into the results of our recent member survey where you shared your preferences on what you want to learn to enhance your genealogy research. Then I'll demonstrate a practical example of my own of the number one area and offer a sneak peek into the engaging content we have. Wow. <laughs> Did that sound like me? Um, that one kind of blew my mind. What do you think? So because I have been recording videos and interviews and all kinds of things using Riverside, they have a sampling, a large sampling of my voice. And when we think about sampling, we think about how did AI learn machine learning? How did it learn to do what it does on things like chat GPT? Well, it devoured the content on the internet. That's the sample, a massive sample. And Riverside was able to recreate my voice. Now it's interesting, most people who I have played that for, just in, in talking with folks, they're like, oh my gosh, that sounds like you. Now, Bill listened to it and said, yeah, you don't talk quite that fast, although you do talk fast, and you would have taken a breath there. But just in passing, it'd be really hard to detect that that wasn't me. So I share that with you, not, first and foremost, to let you know, you're always going to be getting me, the real deal, whether it's the audio podcast or the video podcast. And yes, they can make, you've seen the fake videos on, I'm sure the internet as well. Um, I think what I would want to say is that real, I think is always going to be better than artificial. And it's interesting in reading the description of ASI that they're saying, or uh, AGI, uh, it, it was ASI, the super intelligence, that it was going to be, you know, beyond human. And I think Real is always better than artificial. That'd be my first point. And it will be real here at Genealogy Gems. Um, I liken it to my grandma's cooking, right? So when I think about AI, I think about uh, grandma's cooking was the real deal. It was homemade from scratch, every ingredient. I mean, except for she wasn't grinding the flour herself, but I mean, she was making it the real deal. And I remember when McDonald's came into to being in the, I think around the seventies where I was living at the time as a kid. And Yes, you could get something that looked like food, <laughs> acted like food. Maybe it's not as nutritious as food, um, but it was super fast, for, for super easy, almost the artificial version of dinner at home. And I remember my mom saying, yeah, well, we'll, we'll do that selectively. There'll be once or twice special times, maybe on your birthday, we'll go to McDonald's and get a happy meal. Um, so... I think as we go forward in AI, one of the first things we want to think about is that uh, real is still good. Your brain is still the driving force here in terms of your genealogy research. And we can be selective and careful about how we're going to be using this. Um, 
because it brings up the question, is this good or is this bad? Is it good or evil? Should I be avoiding it? And you may have seen that I have done a video, um, gosh, a year, year and a half ago. It was a while back. It's on the video page at genealogygems.com and where I showed my first interaction with a chat bot and how large language models will basically, if, if, they, if it can't come up with a reasonable answer, it's going to make it up. And that's what we call hallucinations, right? Because it's trying to say, what's the next logical word based on all the internet content that I've devoured? I want it to make sense and deliver it to the user. So it is not a research tool. And that's, that's the key. It's not a research tool for that reason, in that it's not doing the kind of anal analytical research that you're doing. But it's terrific at language. It's terrific at many other kinds of tasks. So we can selectively use it based on what we understand about what it can do and then use it for our advantage to be able to maybe speed up what we're doing. And, um, you know, when people ask me, well, is it, is it good or is it evil? And I think, well, it's like a knife. Is a knife good or evil? Well, on a dinner table at a lovely place setting at a, at a dinner, it's very good and very productive. But in the hands of a killer, it's not. It's evil. So at this point, we still look at it like a tool and it's the way in which we use it. So um, I I've often tell people, you know, me personally, I have a very biblical worldview. And so when I think of that, it makes it very clear to me how to move forward with artificial intelligence, because it, it really is a long term life issue. We, we're not going to get away from it at this point. Um, so I think of it in terms of I'm going to use it for good and to help people. I, I, me, personally, I can't stop it from evolving or being what it is or being used in the wrong hands, but I can use it for good and evil, for good and for helping people and to um, move forward my genealogy research. Um, long term, what, you know, let's just get philosophical here. What's going to happen with this? Well, I don't know about you, but I think history tells us there will always be people who want to use things for the wrong reasons and in the wrong ways. So that's very possible. What we have to keep our eyes on when it comes to ASI, and it's not here yet, is that ASI itself may want power. You know, right? People use things for the wrong reasons in the wrong ways to get power. Will artificial intelligence eventually evolve to a place where it wants the decision-making power? I don't know, you know, and it's one of those things where we have to pick and choose what we worry about today. And every time we go out to the grocery store, we're not going to worry about whether or not we're going to get hit by a car. We're just going to do our best and do good and drive carefully. So that's what we're going to do with the artificial intelligence. At least that's what I'm going to do. And I, and I hope and encourage that you will do the same. So no matter where you currently stand on this, AI is here. Uh, we can do our best to understand it together. And I think that we're going to have fun doing that. Um, the, the scope of this show isn't the whole future and what we contro can control. Um, so we're not going to worry about that. But we are going to be talking about it in terms of our research. And one of the things I wanted to encourage you um, as we're kind of moving to the end of this segment is I was listening to um, Vice President Vance speaking at the AI Action Summit. It just happened this week in Paris, France. He used to work in Silicon Valley. And I've heard this, this saying before, and it was interesting to hear him bring it up again. But I think it's a good reminder and something we need to be thinking about. He said, if you aren't paying for the product, you are the product. And I have actually, I think, said a variation of that here when talking about Google and other tools. And the idea being, <clears throat> as we go forward, you're going to find I'll be talking about some stuff that's free, but I'm going to also be talking about some stuff that we pay for. And the reason is, is because being the product means your data. Um, every time you put information into a chat bot, you are sharing it and it is gone forever. There is no retracting it. And that data is of value and sellable by other entities. So um, free is not always going to be the number one thing that we're looking for. We want high quality and we want some privacy and some control. So keep that in mind as you work with, if you work with chat box this week, whatever, just know that um, your information is the product. And there's no pulling it back once it's out there. 
Uh, and if you're a Windows user, I just upgraded to Windows 11, you might find um, Copilot is actually integrated now into Windows 11. So if you do Alt and a space bar on your computer, you get Copilot, which is kind of the chat GPT of the Windows environment. Keep an eye out for the newsletter. We're going to get the next show out to you here very shortly, probably within two weeks. And we are going to dig into using AI on our genealogy research. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye-bye, my friends. Thanks for listening. <music>